Hello, this is Eric Bobro, and in this lesson we're going to be looking at the difference in the navigator between the project map and the view map. This is an area that uh, users often get confused about, and I've seen many um, ARCHICAD users spend a lot of their time moving around in the project map to work on different parts of the project, um, and then have to spend a lot of extra time managing what layers are turned on and other things um, in order to uh, get the um, model showing what they need at any given time to create drawings or for um, design purposes. So let's take a look at the difference between these two. Project Map has generic categories for the uh, project and this has been expanded in recent versions so for example interior elevations and worksheets I believe were added in in version 11 of ARCHICAD and um, I think 3D documents were added in, in version 12 uh, so uh, this is continued to and sections and elevations were split up I think in version 11 I'm, I'm not quite sure which year it was uh, they used to be to combined together but the basic idea is that these are parts of the project and every one that you look at, for example, this is the first floor and it was bold, uh, this is a viewpoint of the project. Um, and so we have a first floor and we have you know, several sections defined in this little project. Now, the view map shows that we're in the first floor plan, but there are many different versions of the first floor. And, and again, um, this is a, a US project, so the first floor would be the ground floor or the main floor in you know, international reference. Um, the, uh, uh, if I switch, for example, to the lighting and reflected ceiling plan, you'll see that by double clicking on this view, I'm remaining on the first floor of the project, but I'm seeing different information. And if I go down to you know something like a furniture plan, we'll see another variation of this where we're turning on furniture, but turning off some of the annotation, the dimensions and things like that, that wouldn't be on a furniture plan. So these are all three of these are still on the first floor. So in other words, this viewpoint did not change, but the layers and other things did change. Now, if I, if I go to, um, another part of the project, for example, a section, and I'll open up this section right here, we're going to see something rather odd because in this case, the section is showing furniture, which usually we don't show, and it's not showing roofs and other things that are structural that normally we would. And the reason for that is because this viewpoint does not define what's turned on. It just defines where we're looking. We're cutting through the building in a certain location. So in the view map, in order to get a precise view of this, we create a view of the section. So when I double click on this, you'll see that it will take a minute to refresh and now the furniture is turned off and the, all the structural information is completed because the layers have been changed. Now unlike the stories where we might have uh, multiple views, or we usually will have multiple different views for the same viewpoint, the sections most commonly are going to have a single view definition where only specific layers are turned on and a certain scale is being used in a project. There are exceptions, but in general, sections and elevations will have a single style that we're going to um, use for construction documents, and most of the time we'll have that turned on when we're working for modeling purposes. Um, so in other words, we'll use the same layers while modeling or developing the section as we will for the, the final outcome. So one difference is that when I double click on a view, it brings me to a viewpoint with the correct layers, but there are other differences as well. So for example, if I go up to the first floor or go back to the first floor plan, we'll see the information in a certain style. And you'll notice that it says we're in a layer combination called Condoc floor plan or construction documents floor plan. Um, and I can manually change that, of course, um, let's say to the furniture plan, which will 
you know, change what's visible. But uh, there are other things that are affected when I double click on this. So I'll double click it and put it back. That is, for example, the scale. So if I manually change the scale here from quarter inch, which would be the equivalent of one to 50 approximately, to eighth inch, which would be about one to 100, we'll see that the building got a lot smaller, but you'll notice that all of these markers stayed the same size. So I'll just put it back to the setting before here. When I go to the quarter inch scale and zoom back out, um, you can see that the, um, uh, the markers are smaller in relationship to the building because the building is larger in its paper definition. So in fact, in some cases, you may have a set of views for alternate scales for certain parts of the project or for every story in some cases. So here I'll double click on first floor and you can see that I'm still looking at the building. Let me just put it at 100% scale. So this is how it would print out at eighth inch scale. And if I double click on this first floor plan, you'll see the uh, building still about the same size uh, because it's switched to 50%. But let me just switch that to the 100% and the building has gotten bigger, but the markers have stayed the same on paper. So basically when we're, we have a view, it has certain settings. So if I open up the settings for the view, we'll see that the view defines not only what's showing, which would be the layers, but the scale of the building relative to paper and other markers such as the grid bubbles or line weights, things like that. It also will determine whether we're showing the entire walls or just part of the walls and other load-bearing elements. Um, what pens are being used, in other words, what colors and weights of the pens. And model view options, which in this case determine things such as whether the door and window markers are showing or whether the doors are showing normally or for example, in a ceiling plan style view. So all of these things, plus some others, are part of the view definition. And the bottom line is that when you double click on a view, you're able to get a predictable reference. So for example, when I'm working on the first floor lighting and ceiling plan, I know that I'm gonna get it at a certain scale with certain elements turned on. For example, the lighting um, uh, the lamps uh, in the ceiling, etc., are turned on, whereas the furniture and the lower fixtures are turned off, things like that. So the view gives me a predictable base to work from. Because it's predictable and because it can be really fine-tuned to get exactly what you need for any drawing, it's where I would spend my time while working on the project most of the, most of the time. So not all views, though, are intended for documentation purposes. In other words, there may be um, a, a type of view, for example, if I go to the site design, where I set this up, and let me zoom out a bit um, here, and I'll turn off the, the uh, trace reference of the sheet um, that's being shown. So here I'm seeing um, the... Uh, uh, site and I'm seeing a, a footprint of, of part of the building and I'm seeing trees. This is not a complete site plan but it does give me the ability to work on the site terrain in the context of the building. And when I go to the building design section and elevation you'll see that this is a type of drawing that's sort of like a framing plan but it's really not a construction document for framing purposes but it does have the layers that would be useful for working on the design of the building as a whole and working on sections and elevations. If I draw a marquee, for example, you know, through um, an area uh, here and uh, ask for that to take a 3D view of just the marqueed elements, we're going to see that the um, uh, that we're seeing all of the structural components and we could work on all of the building and the relationship between, you know, for example, the the dropped ceiling and the roof and, and things like that. And we're even, if we zoom in a little bit, um, we can see just a little, little bit hard because of the coloring, but you can see the actual framing elements that are um, turned on, uh, which of course we were seeing when we were on the floor plan um, here. So the, um, the uh, views in this case are defining a context for modeling or design 
And we can have other variations, even, for example, this 3D AXO view. So this turns on um, and saves a, a set of layers specifically for um, working on um, the building from the outside um, and uh, for presentation purposes, uh, perhaps. So we're, we're seeing the site information and the building shell. But if I go back to the floor plan here by clicking on the floor plan, um, shortcut or hitting F2, I'll see that this is not really a good working uh, environment for the for the uh, plan view because all of these elements are sort of piled on top of each other. So uh, layers and views can be set up specifically for certain contexts, working in 3D, for example. Now, I would recommend that you spend most of your time working in the view map and we're going to be spending some time in a follow-up lesson looking at how you define views and how you get the most benefit from the views but the question then comes well when do you use the project map what is this good for well i'll show you one example um, i go to let's say the interior design uh, layer combination or view and i'll get rid of the marquee this is a view of that sets up the layers for furniture plan in a certain scale and other settings so that I can work on the fit out of the building. Now if this was a two-story building as it is I could have a second view that's going up to the second floor. If it's a 10-story building I could have 10 of them. It might start getting a little bit tedious to have many many views that are really just variations of the same style but just a different viewpoint, a different story. So I might just jump to the project map and go, for example, to the second floor and instantly be there. So I can jump back and forth between different stories using the project map, even if I don't have a view defined for each of these stories in this particular case. So I may use the story structure here um, in the project map while I'm working to go around, but I generally am not going to double click on a section here because that's going to take me, I'll just go back to the section, we're going to have the section with the wrong layers. You know, if I use this as the way to navigate. Um, now, uh, the um, other thing that we do, I'll just go back to the floor plan. The other thing that we may need the project map for is when you want to create worksheets or details. Now, we're going to spend some more time on this later in the course, but if you want to create an independent worksheet, you need to do it from the project map. This command, new independent worksheet, is only available from the project map, not from the view map. What would you use a new independent worksheet? Well, you can basically it creates a 2D drawing environment that you can draw anything you like, perhaps for just sketching out something, or you can paste in something from uh, somewhere else, or import a DWG file or a PDF file. So a uh, new independent worksheet, and I'll just you know, say create this, we now have a blank area to work in. And you can see that it, it created a new one. I didn't bother renaming it. Um, it just called it wall section, but I'll just call this, um, you know, new worksheet. Uh, so the, uh, uh, in order to create that, we need to right click on the worksheet um, group or any work, any other worksheet. And then we can um, do that here. We can't do it from the view map. In the same way, the details, if we wanted to create a new independent detail, which would be a 2D drafting area where we could perhaps paste in something from a manufacturer or something from a previous project, if we didn't want to create a detail directly from um, calling out uh, from a section or a current view in the project, this would be when I would go to the project map is to create a new independent detail or worksheet. So there are some limited cases where we um, may want to go to the project map. Um, there are some uh, the cameras that you create on the floor plan. If you are putting in multiple viewpoints with the camera tool, these will show up um, here, the path uh, with multiple cameras uh, for animations. These will show up there. But these are very limited purposes that I would spend time in the project map. Mostly I would be in the view map and going back and forth between different uh, views because they're going to give me a predictable result rather than 
jumping to a viewpoint and having the layers all wrong. There's one other thing I want to tell you about in terms of the advantages of the view map over the project map. The view map has the ability to create organizing structures of folders and folders within folders. So you can see here that we've got a group of views that are for modeling and design purposes and they're part of a larger group that's for modeling design and legends, the kit of parts that I've uh, talked about. Um, and I close this up, you can see the structure here. And I'll close this all the way up. So now we'll look at the structure that I've got in this particular project based on master template. We have a group of views for reference materials. Uh, these can be consultants' drawings and um, manufacturers' things and other reference materials that might be brought into worksheets. Uh, we have a group of views for modeling and design purposes, and then for construction documents and for presentation documents. So each one of these can be very rich, and when I open it up, you'll see that we can have the presentation elevations. So these are views specifically with shade and shadow um, for, for that. Um, we even have a, a folder here in case we want to put some of the views away, possibly for later deletion, but we're not quite ready to delete them. We'll put them in the trash and recycling bin to get them out of the way. So the ability to create these new layers or these new folders is quite simple. We can just click on this button here to create a folder and we'll just um, say, it, I'll just call it example. And you see that this has been put in here. I'll just move this around. I can move this up in between these by using, uh, by carefully looking at um, this. We move it to the left side here and uh, we can easily get it to be in any level of the hierarchy. And then if we want to um, grab something and put it into it, we just literally grab it and put it on top of it and it shows up inside that. So creating folders and, and having uh, things collapse and uh, hide when we don't want them uh, be makes it very easy to um, have uh, lots of information but be able to um, hide it. Now if we want to get rid of the uh, a folder uh, we can use the X here and of course uh, depending upon whether there's anything inside it it may give us a warning about that. The project map on the other hand does not have much organizational options. It basically has the categories of project viewpoints, such as stories, sections, elevations, etc. And within each one of these, there are going to be viewpoints. When you create a new story, it'll become a new viewpoint in the stories folder. And when you create a new section by drawing a section marker on the plan, it'll automatically show up here. But on the other hand, the view map, you have the option to create folders and you have the option to create as many views as you find useful. So it allows you to have a very rich environment with as many views as you need, but still only expand that to the level that you might find useful at any given time um, in your workflow. So that's another reason why I spend a lot of my time in the view map is because I can really focus in on the views that I want. In fact, I can even combine, for example, this particular folder for modeling and design has some plan views, um, a uh, worksheet reference, some 3D different types of views, etc. All of these grouped in because when I'm working on modeling, I'm going to go back and forth between plan and 3D and maybe I even want to put in some sections or other things into this uh, particular folder. They're all grouped, whereas in the project map, all of these are separate and we have to manually go back and forth. So the view map is very powerful, and I recommend that you spend uh, the majority of your time uh, working in the view map um, to get best efficiency out of ARCHICAD. So that's a, a short introduction to the difference between the project map and the view map, and my recommendation basically to spend most of your time in the view map and only limited times in the project map um, as you're... Uh, uh, working in the project. So we'll be spending some more time in the next lesson on how do you create views and get the most benefit from them and uh, understanding layers which are of course a key part of views. They determine the visibility of elements. Um, we'll be looking at all of that in the next lesson. So uh, this has been Eric Bobro and uh, thanks for watching.